whiskey situation like Anthony. We, I mean, we normally we do whiskey break at the very beginning now. <clears throat> it's uh, a medley. We got a medley tonight, and we're back with Hollow Points, featuring a whiskey medley. Featuring the engineer, the man who masters the podcast, the man who knows podcasting like the back of his own hand, Anthony. I am Billy. To my right is the man who sits at my right, Ricky. Hello. Good evening. Good so, evening. Did we step on you? No, you're Not at all. Straight hands. Ooh. Some uh, Johnny Walker. Walker. <laughs> you brought the remnants of your liquor cap. Yeah. Oh, Black Label. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Interesting. And uh, Bullet Rye. Bullite, right. I think they call it. Yes. Yes. We decided. You're right. Bullite yes. Rye. All right. We need to uh, break it up, though. We can't mix it. We need to try each one individually. So... There's a couple of those I've never really tried before. Never tried a strain of hand or the. I've tried Black Label, but I was really wasted in a bar <laughs> in the middle of the night, and I was doing it on somebody else's tab, trying to compare it with Johnny Walker Red, thinking that you know I could make a normal comparison. I couldn't. No, it was just yeah, yeah, too late at night and too many drinks in. But this is a good opportunity to try it. All right. All Let's right. Try some strain of hands. Let's try strain of hands. Right. Strain of hands is a Colorado whiskey. It is correct. Uh, corn based, if I'm not mistaken. Um, no. Well, I don't know about now. I know, uh... Look it up. Does it say corn? I don't know. I know when I was working at Flying Dog, they used the, um... They used... After the beer was filtered, they used all the barley and hops as their, um... Mash or whatever. I'm not supposed to do that. (laughs) Don't think I didn't see that. <laughs> There's lots of things to be seen. It doesn't say. It just says whiskey. I'll take some of that whiskey. I think it is, though. I read an article in 5280 about yeah. Yeah, it's local whiskeys. I think it is a corn base. <clears throat> okay. Only because I have to make sure we all get some. Yes, exactly. Got to pour them a little short here. Not at all. All right, there's still more. You guys want more in your cups? I'm good. Just a little bit. You're good? Just, just yeah. a touch. Thanks. I'm going to taste more of the whiskey than the ice. All right. God, gentlemen, I'm just so glad you guys are here tonight and that you uh, accommodated me in having a, uh, a podcast. If you don't mind, I don't want to feel too much pressure, make it too much like a show or a presentation. I really just want to talk to you guys. All right. I uh, feel bad for our last podcast. You know, we basically had to scrap it. And uh, I feel a big responsibility for it. I just don't think it flowed very well. And I I know I initiated bringing this back. And I know you guys enable me because you want to do it too. But uh, I I really want to be more prepared for these things. Okay. And um, I was feeling really down about our last podcast. I really was. But um, my good friend, ex-girlfriend, if you will, Mariana... Uh, a girl that I dated when I was in Ukraine, who I'm still really good friends with, she wrote me this week, and she's been listening to our last couple podcasts that we posted with great enthusiasm. She is so happy that we're back, and she pinpointed several incidents that made her laugh. Uh, uh, she's just so excited about it. I think actually she just uses it to learn English, but whatever. She <laughs> loves it. She loves it. And she right. asked me, she said, will you guys please do another podcast, and will you please talk about, will you please say hello to me, which, hello, Mariana. Hello, Hi. Mariana. Yeah. <laughs> but will you also talk about Ukraine and what can Americans do to help Ukraine? <laughs> she just uh, she's living in Latvia now, and she has been for the last several years. But she just went back to visit for the last few weeks. She's now on her way back to Latvia on a twenty-eight hour bus ride. Mm. Wow! Yeah, that does not sound fun. Not at all. Be- I mean, you know, the flights are not that expensive for people like you and me, Rick. I mean, even the three of us could afford a, a flight. Yeah. It's like two hundred bucks. Right. But that's such is their reality right now. You work and you live in Latvia. She's an engineer. If she lived here, she'd be making six figures. Right. She absolutely would. Right. But where she lives, in Ukraine, Latvia, she makes peanuts. Cannot even afford a plane ticket to her home country. Damn, dude. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. Tough. So she asks, what can we do to help Ukraine? What can we do? Like the three of us? Americans. 
Oh, and Americans yeah. mostly, like well, but but led by the three of us, obviously. Because, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because we do lead America, which is, to be honest, that's kind of like how we project, which is how we presented ourselves through this podcast yeah. that we always have. Yeah. Um, first, we can become more conscious of people outside of our borders. Yeah, you know, like Peruvians. We're very, you know, we, we're Americans. We don't really pay attention to what goes on outside of America unless it's on the television. It's right. weird that you go right to consciousness. I went right to salad dressing. Yeah? Because I thought, like, I'll... No sure. more Russian salad dressing. <laughs> it's done. I'm done. I'm done. No more. I won't do it. I won't buy it. I won't I won't advise other people to, to you know, to put it on there. Right. Salads. No more. It's done. And as you guys know, that's a big sacrifice for me. Yeah? I used to buy the stuff by the barrel full. It I mean, is. I love Russian salad it's dressing. It's delicious. Yeah. Yeah. But... I'll join that protest. Phase yes. number one. Phase number two, Ukraine needs its own salad dressing. They do. Yeah. All right. So, what would that taste like? Well, what is their cuisine like? Well, that's, that's what I'm asking. It's going to taste like Russian salad dressing. Stop it. No, it won't. It <laughs> It'll can't. It'll taste like it Russian can't. salad dressing, but No, it cannot. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like that. All right. All right. Okay. Yes, it will. It will always <laughs> taste weaker than Russian salad dressing. That's a fact. It's a fact. I'm sorry, Ukraine, it, but it's a fact. Well, that's my sacrifice. Well, my other sacrifice was every time I, I, I'm in a bar or something and I see Putin's image on the television, I will say, Hey, look at that bozo! Everybody! Hmm. Look at the bozo! He's a bozo! What kind of reaction do you think you'll get? They'd be like, what are you talking about? Like, that guy, he's a bozo, don't listen to him. And they'd be like, all right, yeah, he is weird looking. I get what you're saying. I don't like him. He don't got no chin like I got. You know? I don't like that guy. You don't like the Pats? I don't like that guy. I picture this all happening in Boston, by the way. I don't know why, but I do. I don't. Yeah. yeah. What, but what else? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I can't I, even... Because she was, I think she seriously wanted us to talk about it. And all I can... Well, I don't... What do you do? What do you do? What did you want to do when you wanted to go and um, help the people of Yemen? Let, 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 let's t touch on that a little bit later, but that's a great, great question. Um, and it de definitely ties into this. But within Ukraine, um, I sent money to soldiers. Do you? I did. I did. Not do. I did. <laughs> I did not money, but <clears throat> okay. I did not send money. To, I sent, but I sent a lot of equipment to like, soldiers. Like what? Ah, oh, man. Like they, they didn't have anything. I had to send toilet paper, toothbrush, uh, mm. toothbrushes, uh, mouthwash. Um, toilet paper, if you I didn't already that. say that. Uh, uh, a lot of toilet um, paper. They need a toilet paper because the thing is, they don't have a lot of, they don't have things to wipe their asses with. <laughs> yeah. So I sent all of these things, uh, jeans, <laughs> anything they asked, I sent it to them. And it cost like a hundred bucks a pop to ship it to these guys. And at that point, I realized, well, no, no revolution is worth a hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That, but that's what's so, so shitty about this. Do you know what I mean? It's so shitty. Right. I mean that sincerely. That, that's that's what's. Oh, yeah. I, I believe more or less in their cause, but I can't. I, I can't afford hundred bucks a pop. I could go out there and organize. I could set up a charity. I could get other people to donate. Did I? No. No. Hmm. Should I? I don't know. That's I mean that's what really. I, I yeah. Do you think about these things? No, I don't. Never. No. When you read the news. No. I don't either. I'm when you hear about dear old Ukraine, who's been who? Let's say, let's face it. Uh, outside of any other country, Ukraine has very much supported this podcast. Very much. So. <laughs> we, I agree. We have yes. to agree on that. <laughs> yes, and I have nothing against Ukraine. It's just I'm I'm a typical you, American. I don't really care much about the world outside of my own immediate family. I mean, I like. I I'll, mean, that makes sense. I'll watch I get, the no, news, I get it. Yeah. Uh, you know, and like. It's just hard for me to form an opinion about Ukraine since I've never been there. I've never really, you know, met anybody from there. At least. But you knew a guy who lived there, who knew people who lived there. Right. And I hear... That's a connection. You I, got a connection. And I hear very great stories from you. Yeah. And very entertaining oh, stories. Oh, love, love and I love stories. hearing the stories. Yeah. But other than that, what do I know? Nothing. And it's so, a land of contrast. You know that. Okay. Yeah. What was Their your favorite Ukraine, Ukraine story from Billy? Actually, my favorite Ukraine story was why he doesn't give uh, money to homeless people anymore. Um, he, he mentioned that on a podcast yeah, uh, yeah. years ago about how the, um, like out here, he would do it from time to time, give it to homeless people. But when he went out there, he saw, I mean, you can tell the story better. But no, no, please do. Uh, yeah. Just, well, you remember, yeah. Yeah, just about <clears throat> the, the fact that 
there's a gentleman out there with no legs in the middle of winter um, with a spade or some kind ice of tool. Scraper. Yeah, uh, ice scraper. Just yeah. chipping away ice yeah. on the street, trying to prove his worth to the show that even though he's you know incapacitated, he can still be a productive, a productive member of society. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know he w- was doing it. Um, you know, for that reason alone, and then it just made Billy realize just how lazy American bums fucking are, and that you know, fuck you, you don't deserve any fucking money. You're not legless in the fucking dead of winter in Ukraine chipping away ice for people. You know, you're not working for anything. You're not proving your worth. Yep. And they're they're yeah. they're the they're in the richest fucking country in the world. You know, American, so, American bums. Yeah, American bums are yeah. in the the richest. Not that legless country. fellow. Huh. So Who it, took forever to scrape off that sidewalk for fuck's sakes, <laughs> by the way. It made me really late to work. But no, I, I'm sorry, but yes. No, it's a that did, point, that, no, that yeah, that that still sticks with me to this day, yeah. I don't see any American homeless guys doing that. They use uh, they use irony, they use comedy in mm-hmm. their sign. Right. They don't they, laziness. Uh, pity, they try to look really pitiful, yeah. they bring children into it, but they never actually do shit. Try to work. No. Try to demonstrate that they're right. worth anything. No. All right. You know? Have you guys ever, like, thought about, like, being homeless? Like... No. If you ever were homeless or even thought about intentionally going homeless or anything? Yeah. yeah. No, Actually, I, yeah. Actually, I work yeah. all the time. I'm like, yeah. these guys have it be- made better than we do. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, you look at them... Well, all right. Let's say this. No, they um, do, but... I... I mean, I don't know about you, but I mean, like... I guess it's different for you since you have a family mm-hmm. where I just have me mm-hmm. and a dog. So, I mean, it's not, I'm not always going to have a hot meal every night, you right. know, even three meals a day, if that, you know, um, these clients who come into our doors get three hot meals a day, they get a bed, they have TV, right. they have access to showers, <clears throat> um, mm-hmm. clothes, mm-hmm. Right. you know, whatever they need. We provide it for them. Mm-hmm. Right. And they don't even have to pay for it because right. we do through their Medicaid. Yeah. Right. So, I Ex- yeah. Explain to the folks at home what Medicaid is. For those who don't know what Medicaid is. It's pretty much free health insurance that we pay for. Free health insurance. For yes. who? People who... Poor and indigent. Poor, poor people. Yeah, yes. people who can't afford yes. Yes. health okay. insurance okay. or have a job that they get health insurance right. through. Okay, good. So, <clears throat> you get these clients who sit there and then the thing that pisses me off is when they come through those doors... Mm-hmm. They're so fucking entitled to everything. They act like it's owed to them. Right. Mm-hmm. That like, oh, so you sit on your ass on the corner of the street holding up a, a shitty cardboard sign, if you're even doing that, mm-hmm. and people give you money, you shuffle over to the liquor store that you're standing right in front of, you buy yourself the cheapest fucking whiskey or uh, a tall boy of the strongest, shittiest beer, if it's Steel Reserve or Pitbull or whatever mm-hmm. the fuck it is. Mm-hmm. You know, you get drunk enough to come in because you come in all the time Mm -hmm. you're a regular you're guaranteed to be there you know for at least 24 hours if not 5 days Mm -hmm. right so you know I mean these people are just doing it because they're fucking worthless and they just want to come in and get a fucking hand me out you know so like when I was a teenager I actually like had this romantic vision of just saying fuck it all and just going homeless just taking off and walking and I I thought about that though what inspired it? Yeah. Just, I, I don't know. Just like my station in life, just uh, maybe the, the music like, well, I was listening well, to and stuff at the time. Just like Kerouac, and not music, but like well, Kerouac probably. I mean, I, I wasn't just the like road. hitting the road and uh, kind of yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, 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 I could but, identify with that. But yeah. I, I was talking about like because I was talking about this with John at the time. He's living with us, and for the folks at home who don't know what John is, oh, what's what? a John? <laughs> Well, <laughs> a John. Just is, give us no, no, no. Just give us a brief. Synopsis. John is a friend of yours. Yeah, John's a friend okay. of mine who uh-huh. uh, I grew up with. Who wound up um, moving into uh, my parents' house with us when we were teenagers. Cool. Okay. Um, hmm. it just talked about going homeless, and you know, I thought about all that shit. It's like, you know, would I be too proud to beg? I think I would be. I don't think I'd beg. And so it's like, so how how would I get by? What would I do? And I just I thought about. You know, it's like, well, you know, I'd go into, like, one of these giant, like, uh, a grocery store, and I would use their facilities to, you know, piss or shit, and then Mm -hmm. I'd just graze on their fucking, like, produce. I'd grab one of those baskets and just kind of act like I'm shopping, and then just fucking walk out the door, 
And if somebody, hey, stop, that's when I run. If not, I just keep fucking walking. But presumably your clothing would get more and more ragged as the days go by. Presumably. And then they would just same, think, you, like, this is not a shopper that we want grazing our produce. But, so we got to stop this guy and ask just you, what it is he's doing with our mushrooms. But if you if you are that conscious about your clothing and you do that same shit at fucking, like, uh, department stores, Target or some shit. No, no, Target never does that. No, they don't care what you look like. So yeah, either way, yeah, Walmart yeah. does. It. What I'm saying is, like, <laughs> yeah, you could look like shit and go to Target. Right. Yeah, King Supers, come on, let's get with the times. No, you're right. They have a high end clientele, don't they? <laughs> no, they do nowadays. Yeah. They've really changed their image. So, <laughs> but you can go to Target or Walmart and just yeah. look like shit, and no one will care. But you know, just just one of those things. And so it's just like I wonder. You know, so in my head, it's like I know what I, at least I think I know uh-huh. what I would do in these kind of situations. Uh-huh. And if it, you know push comes to shove, start fucking robbing people. I don't fucking beg for money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, because I, I work, see I work for it. I see I this take image what I want, of a woman I don't beg for it, crying with her hands behind her head, and Anthony with the gun pressed up. I don't beg for money, <laughs> and just screaming, "Give it to me." It's true. <laughs> I'm not begging you. I'm it's telling funny you. because it's true. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. So, that, but again, those were my romantic visions of being homeless. <laughs> it's not what we see in our facility. <laughs> no, not at all. But but there is a romance to it. I think not, not so much of a romance as an infantilization that you basically get to go back to be a child again. That's what I get out of it. Right? I'm a kid. Yeah. I... No, we are. We we are. You tell me when to go to bed. You tell me when to eat. Uh, no, I mean, we all are in the yeah. sense that we, you know, you like your comic book movies and you're, I have my Superman bitch <clears throat> that I don't like to talk about, but I have them. Your Superman what? Bed sheets. <laughs> bed sheets. Okay, yes, we have in, okay, we have childish traits. Okay. Right. But the way these people live, well, we support ourselves, so that's a little bit different. The way those people live is the way I lived when I was an eight-year-old, right? I think mm-hmm. that's what you're trying to say. Mm-hmm. Um, They're totally, what I'm trying to say? I think, if I'm interpreting correctly, that they, they, well, they live saying, like children. They do live like children. And there's like something, something they, uh, so, somewhat no, 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 enviable no, no, no. about it. You're right. They do live. I mean, like, for instance, uh, we have a, a client in there today who's court ordered to be in a treatment facility. Mm-hmm. He completed one, and he had to finish off his sentence with us. Which he came in, relapsed, not even a week later, and got kicked out of the program, and is now spending some time in our detox. So, it's like, you know, in my mind, it's like, all right, the guy failed. Send his ass to fucking jail, Mm -hmm. you know? Right. What's so hard about this? But they don't want to do that, and so they keep him there to enable him to have no consequences against his actions. This guy flipped out because he overslept through one of the meals, so he threw himself on the floor. You know, this guy's missing a leg, too. Right. So he threw himself on the floor, threw his wheelchair across the room. They had to drag him out and put him in the quiet room. Which is like, pretty easy when a guy doesn't have a leg. Yeah. True. And, you know, a giant Jamaican is carrying you out. Right. Mike was there. So, I'm sorry, you said that he was court-ordered to be in a facility? Be mm-hmm. in a treatment facility. Just any kind of treatment facility? No, yeah. out of the, out of facility specifically, Well, yes. Right? Yes, because, you know, we have all the... <clears throat> We have an agreement. This is a lockdown facility. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A facility that does okay. not allow him to go out. Exactly. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. You know who I blame? The Jews. You always do, Billy. What, no. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? Is that what you're going to say? No. <laughs> what did the Jews do? Nothing, Billy. Billy. I just right. gave him a hard time. Okay. I blame him. <clears throat> I blame his parents. I mean, I bl- do blame the parents, you know? I mean, we have a frequent... Flyer, as we call so, them. No, we don't. That's what I love. That I love yeah, frequent flyer. That's so fucking pathetic. So the the lady who runs the facility, uh-huh. when she does these tours, she's a lovely lady, Filipino of extraction. And when she whenever she gives tours, she says, you know, whenever these homeless people they keep coming back, we call them frequent flyers. <laughs> she does that holy <laughs> snort laugh thing. Yeah. Well, she made it funny. Yeah. And I just look at her like. I don't fucking call them that. Right. It's not a fucking airline. They're not <laughs> fucking flying. Right. They're regulars. <laughs> they show up regularly. They're not flying. Right. Stop fucking calling them that. Even in jest, you fucking cunt. <laughs> <laughs> I would never say it. You should on your last day. But that's what I think. 
I just said it now. <laughs> Maybe that, that that will lead to my last day, which would be great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Are you looking to get fired? Oh, definitely. I do want to go back to Ukraine, though, for a okay, minute. Yeah. I really do. I really do. Because I, I really want that to be the theme tonight. Because of Mariana. She's been a big supporter of ours ever since we started the podcast from the beginning. Yeah. She has listened to every episode. She has commented on every episode. She has asked us questions about every episode. And I feel remiss if we don't acknowledge that she really wants us to talk about Ukraine and its situation. I just talked to Ricky this week. Did you read this New York Times article about the North Korean missiles? No. So dig this. Turns out, you know, they said that the, the Korean missiles, they couldn't reach the U.S., right? Right. They, they, they can't. They, maybe Guam, a U.S. territory. Right. Well, the most recent article says they can reach maybe as far as Denver. Ah. The reason why? Dnipropetrovsk, the city I lived in, in uh-huh. Ukraine. Yeah. Because they sold them the technology. They sold okay. them the engines to drive their rockets as far as Denver. Right. Maybe specifically. Okay. But this far, yeah. So that's changing my opinion of. Uh, so I, yeah. I, I could have, I could have taken them out when I had the chance. Oh, Billy. Yeah. All right. You should have. It's you fucking should've. creepy, right? I woke up one morning to that news. What the fuck do you do with that? Right. And so now, okay, refresh my memory. When uh, Russia recently annexed um, Crimea, Crimea, mm-hmm. did that affect Dnipro uh, Petrov at all, or, <laughs> or, or how do you pronounce that city? Let's just call it Dnipro because they, they officially changed the name. Okay. It's Dnipro now. They right. shortened it officially Dnipro. because so of, just Dnipro. is it under Russian occupation? Uh, no, 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 no. It isn't. But I think they shortened it because the Dnipro refers to the river, uh, okay. the Dnieper River. Uh, Petrovsk, Petrov, Petrovsk, I can't do it with that. Dnipropetrovsk, yeah. the Propetrovsk part, yeah. refers to some Soviet person. So okay. uh, in 2013, when they had this uh, kind of pseudo-revolution, uh, Dnipropetrovsk, they got rid of all the Lenin statues, they got rid of all those Soviet trappings. Right. Um, a lot of the cities in the East did not, of course, they're like, siding with Russia, but Dnipropetrovsk is very much right now on the part of Ukraine. So they got rid of all those pro-Russian okay. traits. To my understanding, forgive me if I'm wrong, but that's how I understand So this it. isn't Putin's doing? No. No, it is. It is. It absolutely is. is they it? shorten their name to Dnipro because they don't want to be associated with Russian... No, 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 no. They're selling the equipment to... No, 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 and no. Nor is it officially Ukrainian. I think it is just the, the city, city itself, yes. The and I knew city? It. Yes, I knew this when I, when I moved there in 2010. Uh, it was a closed city. No foreigners had been allowed to even visit it for like 60 years because they were primarily known for manufacturing rockets. That's what they were known for. They built the rockets that sent Yuri Gagarin to outer space. I mean, they built rockets. That's what they did. Um, And I think in 2013, with this bullshit revolution, they recognized an opportunity to make money and they, I don't know who they are, nobody knows who they are, but the, right. the engineers, rocket scientists, etc., who maybe run these facilities, sold the technology to North Koreans. Because not long before that, they, uh, some North Korean agents were caught, captured, arrested, and tried, apparently, in Ukraine. But with the, uh, in 2013, after the revolution, mm, there were no laws anymore. So they were able to kind of take advantage of it and, and get these guys to sell them the technology for a price. Gotcha. <clears throat> yeah. Well, you gotta do what you gotta do, but it doesn't make me happy about that city. No. Nope. It's a great city, though. You know. You know what? They have a. You. you th- but the thing is, though, you guys, you never went to the circus there, and you never saw the ice skating rink, and you never saw. No. You guys have probably seen street. You guys have seen streets before. <laughs> Once or twice. And you guys, yeah, but you. The one thing you guys never saw. Train station. Did you get? You've never seen that though in a city. Not, yeah. Not. You saw. You saw a tra- city. I've seen. Not yeah. Not a. Not a Ukrainian. But train you've seen station. a train. Yeah. I've been on a train. I've visited yeah. a train station. Oh, oh. I've seen a train <clears throat> station. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You know, they have these streets. They're they're not like our streets. They're not they're black, 
uh, um, what do they call that? With you know, the aggregate of stones, asphalt, asphalt. Love that, love that. They have these big things, these big rocks, like stones, like right? cobblestone. Cobblestone, cobblestone, cobblestone. Have you seen that before? I have. Yes. So they have everything <laughs> that everybody else has. I think so. Ah, fuck those guys. Yeah. Fuck you, Crank. <laughs> not you, Sorry, Crank. Sorry, Mariana. God damn it. Mariana. No, it? don't. It's not Mariana's fault. Mariana did not build those rockets. But that was a real sobering fucking article. I read this one. It's fucking I, crazy. Yeah. 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 yeah, because of that, and you know what? It is the world's fastest shrinking city. Nipopetros? Mm uh hmm. Or Nipope? Yeah, Nipro. Nipro. The world's fastest shrinking city. Is there a P at the end? Nipro? No. Nipro. 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 D N I P R O. Can I get some Nipro. black label? The D is silent for whatever reason. All right. Yeah. Nipro. Just a little bit of black label. Just some right. black label for Ricky. Now I just want to see what Billy's... Now, now we're playing catch-up. We have to... Well, you guys are doing all the talking. I'm doing all the drinking. All right. I have no Ukrainian conversation. People no, you do, but you do, though. I mean, okay. you, don't, you don't have to know anything about the country. Well, I, I, I'm just relying on your guys' reactions. I just really want your guys' old-fashioned reactions. You don't have to know anything about the history. Don't care about that. I love you guys. I want your reactions. Well, based on the story Billy just told, you have a direct connection to fucking Ukraine now because one of their missiles might take us out. Yes, yes. And it might be your best friend's fault that I didn't take them out first. How do you feel about that? I always knew it would be you. You always <laughs> no, no, you didn't. No, you did not. You, yes. you, you never said that. No, you didn't. You know what? Since we were kids, we'd grown up together, you always said, I feel the end of the world will be because of some small, obscure city in Ukraine. I don't know why. No. But that's what's going to end this I think human experience. I, I think it's um, when we were young kids and you were doing something that was bound to get us in a lot of trouble. I remember thinking to myself, this guy's going to be the death of you. And what I know, he did not take out the people who are going to take us out. Right. And here we are. You're still alive. For now. Yeah. You wily son of a bitch. No, you, you're, you're the survivor. You. You're the survivor. We're going to be sitting there on Monday watching our solar eclipse, our heads in the sky, and a missile's just going to drop. I still don't know what an eclipse is. It's a car. <clears throat> Again, I'm giving up Russian dressing. What are you guys going to do to help Ukraine? Please, give me something. Uh, on, a fr on a friendship level. I'm going to invest in an American rocket manufacturer. I like his thinking. <laughs> well, let me, I mean, you know, this guy, DJ Trump. Have you heard of this guy? Have you heard of him? <laughs> DJ Trump? Uh, Donald James Trump. DJ Trump, they call him. Unfortunately. Yeah, he's running things here these days. Well, you know, he has a lot of ideas about making America great again. I don't see America being that great. No. I'm not even kidding here. No. Why, why the fuck don't we just make Ukraine great again? I'm serious. Why, don't we make Why do we not make Ukraine great again? America, I don't think that anybody's really committed to that. Why don't we, Hollow Points Podcast, be the first to make Ukraine great again? Mug? I don't know what that means. What that's, is that? That's the acronym that everybody uses for the hashtag. Nope. MAGA. Okay. It works. But it works for you, Mugga, doesn't it? it yeah. And Make you, Ukraine great. Why can't Mugga. why can't we we should do that? <laughs> Hashtag Mugga. You know they would love us. We'd be celebrated as heroes. In America, we'd just be like guys who protest on the street with like the women with the pink pussy hats. Let's do something <laughs> for a country who would never expect us to show up. We're like right. the three guys that show up and say we're here to save we Ukraine. Have those pink pussy hats. And they're like, oh my god, <laughs> what are you guys doing here? It's like the three amigos. Yes. Only instead of going down to Mexico, we'll be going to Ukraine. Yes. 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 Exactly. Can I be, why not? Can, <laughs> can I be Chevy Chase? <laughs> I think you guys think I'm kidding. I'm fucking not kidding. I think we really could do something. Uh, have at it, man. Yes. You well, I need Chase. your help. I need your support, <laughs> for God's sakes. Don't have Only me at it. Martin. Give me some support. All right. We just gave you Martin Short. Go, Billy. Go Ukraine. <laughs> Mugga. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I don't sense that you guys are totally. So <clears throat> I'm not poo pooing on your idea. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but I got I got a notebook here. Yeah, it's a Dungeons and Dragons <clears throat> notebook. 
Remember, remember those uh, Crossfire or uh, was it Crossfire? What, what was the, the show that William F. Buckley used to have? I think it's Crossfire. Crossfire, yeah. And he used to have a clipboard and a, and a pencil. Mm-hmm. Well, I got something similar. I mean, I couldn't afford a fancy pencil. I couldn't or a, or a clipboard. But I have this so this this really old fashioned sixth grade notebook yeah. from my time in Ukraine. So when Marion asked me to talk about Ukraine. I dug through some of my stuff and I found my notebook from Ukraine. And I really hope you guys will indulge me. Sure. On this. Yes. Please. It's not not for the effect of the podcast or anything else, you, but I think it's really good. And, and these aren't those love letters you wrote to apples that we already. Discussed? No, it has nothing to do with apples. No, okay. apples is dead to us as of now. He may come back though. We hope. I don't. <clears throat> <laughs> Sounds like there's been some. Uh... Is there communication? Mm. Oh. No. Billy. You made it sound like you had something cooking. Do you got something cooking? No, just hopeful. I'm hopeful. Okay. I'm a Are hopeful you the rock? Party. Can <laughs> no. I smell what you're cooking? I just want apples to... I, I do. I really do hope that he comes back. Just But not like session. as us and like him like just storming in. <laughs> <laughs> you guys started the podcast without me? <laughs> <laughs> Drool just hanging off his chin. <laughs> His fucking Johnny Resnick looking hair just blowing in the wind. That was a great haircut, wasn't it? <laughs> Johnny Resnick did have a really great haircut. Huh. <clears throat> so please, Billy. Please, please, can I, yeah. can I share with you yes, some, of this, some of these entries from back when I was in Ukraine? Circa 2010 to circa 2011. Uh, my boss at the Learning Center. She would always pronounce her V's as a W. Did we visit the gym today? She would also say, it seems to me. That's a big Ukrainian phrase. They, seem, they think that all of us Americans say, it seems to me. <laughs> Nothing ever seemed that way to me. Has anything ever seemed any way to you? No. It seems to me. No. It's ridiculous. It's a stupid phrase. She'd also, <laughs> yes. For me, it is not a problem. No matter what you ask. For me, it is not a problem. Mm. Yeah. Can I have tomorrow off? For me, it is not a problem. Yeah. Someone else might be. Yeah. That's uh, usually what we say, like, in America, when we want to indicate, don't fucking ask me. Right. <laughs> you know, it's like... So one of my students, too, as far as I can, yeah, uh, I'm sure we've talked, and you'll have to forgive me, if we, we've definitely talked about some of these people in past podcasts, but I want to resurrect some of these characters and these ideas. Artyom. My buddy Artyom, who was one of my students. One time I asked him, Artyom, do you go to the gym? He goes, yes, I go to gym. It's like, um, okay, what gym do you go to? He goes, Billy, listen, I study my body in some places. Just left it, just left it like that. So I study mysterious. my body in some places. <laughs> I leave it to you, gentlemen. What does that mean to you? Well, that, that's, what does that conjure? Well, yeah, 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 please tell me. Things. Let your imagination go wild. When he says like some places, mm-hmm. does he mean like some places on his body, or does he go certain places? What I'm asking to you, examine. What his do body? you think? What, I, what is what you think? I study my body in B, some places. B. I think he like specifically goes to like libraries. And, yeah, like, yeah. Like, it looks up. <laughs> well, I was thinking my body. Like, lifts up his shirt, and just checks out his abs. In front of the girl. Yeah, that's what I thought. That was my initial thought. Like he goes into a secret room and he just looks, looks up shit. and he makes notes. Billy, it's not quite six pack. It's more like three and a half. Not what I want, but getting better. What I'm noticing is Billy's lifting up his shirt and impersonating. And what was the last time you saw some sun? It's been a long time. <laughs> okay. what, all right, so what I get out of this is, you remember the movie Bloodsport? Uh-huh. Remember that scene? Mm-hmm. You mean, no, 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 you mean the Academy Award-winning film Bloodsport. Okay. Yes, sir, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Okay, that that's, yeah. that's that one. Yeah. yeah. All right. You have to say that because the Academy owns license. Yeah, you have to, t- Academy Award yeah. nominated <laughs> film. Nominated when you... I In the nominate. Academy Award winning film okay, Blood Academy, Sport. Yeah. We don't know. The for Academy, best kiss. <laughs> Academy acknowledged film. Okay. Blood Sport. <laughs> Alright, so you know the scene when they first come to the tournament yeah. or when they're going to sign up for the tournament. Mm-hmm. And what was to, the name of the tournament? In Blood the Sport. Kumite. No. 
It was a Kumite. No, it wasn't. What movie are you talking about? No, no, no. It was called the Really, Really Big Awesome Tournament. <laughs> so What's when they went Kumite? To the, so when they went to the Really, Really Big Awesome uh, Tournament. Yeah. And, um, Thank you. They had to like sign, <clears throat> sign in. And they walked down that really shady, narrow alleyway in between all those buildings. And you just see the weirdness. Going on, the people all drugged up, the prostitutes, whatever, they're just laughing. Mm-hmm. I just imagine as they're walking down, there's like a little hole in the wall with a little mirror. And there's this Russian or Ukrainian kid <laughs> studying his body, flexing these muscles. Right, studying his posing, body in some places. Studying, getting approval from people. In some places. In some places. <laughs> yeah. Other places, not so much I love approval. That too. Here's another question that Artyom asked me. Artyom. Did black people invent the word fuck? <laughs> he actually asked this. Yeah. That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know who invented the word fuck. I don't know either. No, no, well. But this was, was a real question for him. Yeah, I don't know. I think, well, when I uh, was taking those uh, English lit classes in college, uh, the professor, John Sullivan, was explaining, um, like, in English at least, uh, our curse words tend to be um, explosive. Mm-hmm. Four letters, one mm-hmm. syllable. Mm-hmm. And and so, and he was comparing that to, like, because we were reading Hamlet at the time. And he was talking, well, Hamlet loved multi-syllabic curse yes. words. Yeah. But, like, he was yeah. talking about, like, um, zwoons. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep all the ice. I don't need that much ice. Uh, th- there's, a, there's a curse word in there. Um, zwoons. 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 And what it is, it's, it's a hyphenated uh, phrase for uh, meaning uh, by God's wounds. And the idea was, yes, it was blasphemous, okay. this idea that God could bleed, that he was mortal, he could be damaged. And so it was like one of their worst, um, like, uh, 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 it was blasphemy, so it was one of their worst uh, curse words you could say. Whereas in English, it's more fuck, shit, cunt. And hmm. uh, he, he was he had dated that back to sometime back in the act, actual like England when that started to emerge. So I would have to say this long winded uh, explanation led me to say no, a black person did not invent the word fuck because it was like it, that's an acronym too for unlawful. It was a knowledge. Puerto Rican. I it knew was. it. What I is know. it? A Puerto Rican. No. Fuck. It's it's uh they you see that uh, um that movie The Scarlet Letter. Where they would brand women with that big red Demi Moore. A. Yeah. It was around that same time. That, yeah, yeah. That that was what the they Nathaniel were. Hawthorne novel. Yeah. Yeah. That's <clears throat> that time period is when they would those women were brought up on the charges of uh, for unlawful cardinal knowledge. And that's what fuck stands for. It's an acronym. Mm. For for unlawful. Unlawful cardinal. Card- cardinal? Cardinal. Cardinal knowledge? Yes. So, my dear student, Artyom, who I haven't seen in seven years, God bless you, I love you. No. There's your answer. Black people did not invent the word fuck. It's an acronym. It goes all they the way back. might have invented the word. To Nathaniel Hawthorne. Jive? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Artyom also had his first dance to the Scorpions. <laughs> his first dance? Yeah. What song? Uh, he didn't say, but first dance... The, I remember this night too. It's a drunken night in Nepropetrovsk or Dnieper, <laughs> as they prefer to be called now. For fuck's sake! Uh, first dance, first album, first black eye, all to Scorpions. First black guy he danced. Black with. eye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought he was like, uh, yeah. like no, don't don't black guy. In Ukraine, won't make any sense. There are no black guys, well, which is fine. But uh, I'm I'm just black guy. so that so that uh, that made me want to ask you guys. First dance. What was your first dance? Achy Breaky Heart. No, 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 not, not, <laughs> not, not regulated by the school. We already went over that. Oh. First voluntary dance. What was your first like dance? With, uh, like with a girl with who danced, yeah. Not yeah. me just up there shaking my ass by myself. So no, well. no, 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 I, t- I, well, I don't know, but I, I take, <laughs> these were notes that I took seven years ago. I take it to mean uh, a girl dancing. <sighs> this is embarrassing. Who does that song, Faithfully Yours? I don't know. I don't even know I don't what know that song either. is. I don't know either. Is it, uh, is it Journey? I don't know what that I song don't is. Know. I don't know what the song <laughs> is. Faithfully Yours. Give us Sing a few it. bars. Yes. Give us a few bars. I think it's Please. Journey. Right. Sing it. Just give us I, a few I bars. I can't. 
Give us a few bars. You know it. Just no, give it. You don't have to sing it. Just say it. Lyric. Just say it. I don't, I don't know it. Stop I don't looking know. at me. Then if you don't know it, why did you bring it up? You <laughs> because I know that's the song. I just know say I it. Can... Say certain words. I can't. Faithfully uh, yours. <laughs> Faithfully. That doesn't help. <laughs> that's how I know. It's... <laughs> say some words. And I did. That doesn't help. <laughs> Okay. All right, it was faithfully yours. It was at my sis, my older sister's wedding, who I don't. She's not my sister anymore. I got it, got it, got okay. it. Yeah, but it was at her wedding. That was the first dance. I was to that band. I think it was Journey. That song. The woman was my mom. All right. How old were you? Twenty-seven. Oh, that's so 14. sad. That's so sad. Right. It's 14. even sad as fourteen. <laughs> it was fourteen. Yeah. Because I, 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 I refused to dance with my mom way before I was 14. Let's just let's just get that out of the way right now. Mm-hmm. Well, then what about you, Billy? <laughs> First song you danced to with a woman. Uh, outside of our grade school and bullshit. Yes. That First wasn't dance. regulated. That is tough. I don't know what the first dance would be. T-bar? Oh, no, I do. I do. I do. Uh, my cousin's brother-in-law's sister. I don't know what that means to me. Um, we had a dance at her wedding. I don't remember the song. Hmm. But that was a dance that was not sanctioned by the state or by the Boxing Commission of Nevada, hmm. but it was... Yeah. Okay. T-Bar? <clears throat> I have no idea what the song was because I was really fucking drunk. It was uh, in a club here in Denver. Sandy's 21st birthday. Getting jiggy with it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably, it might have been. Probably. All I know is like the only time I've ever danced, even with my wife, because I'm not a, you know, we don't dance. The, the only time I've ever danced was with her back before we were married on her 21st birthday. And it consisted of me drunkenly just dry humping her leg. <laughs> 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 what I thought was a suave like, uh, rhythm. Is that when she said yes? <laughs> yeah, that was pretty much it. This no, man is mine. She was like... She, she, she actually stopped me. <laughs> <laughs> but there's not compute here. I mean, I mean... So I don't know what song was playing, and so I have no idea. Come, come, my baby. You're my sugar father. What was it the first... <laughs> it might have been. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember the first song you danced with your wife to? I just explained that story. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening. No, I was listening. Just... What was your you didn't seem... Did you guys have an actual wedding? No. no, we we had a ceremony. So you, oh, we, so you didn't have a first dance? No, well, we had a reception, but it was an un. That uh, was there. Uh, yeah, really weird bleach blonde hair. It was unconventional. Uh, yeah, it was unconventional bleach blonde. Yes. <laughs> it was an unconventional reception. We just kind of invited a bunch of people and just threw a party and no Jews. <laughs> that was by chance. I just had no. It was it was very much on purpose. If I remember correctly. <laughs> It was a while ago, but you did tell me, like, Billy, don't say anything. There's no juice allowed. But it's been a long time. I think we can admit now that that was the idea. Okay. I don't remember the conversation, but I'll believe you. Uh, I say a lot of things I don't remember. <laughs> you say something about podcasts. not inviting yeah. Jews. <laughs> <laughs> Mariana's story really, really affects me because she barely makes enough to feed her family. Feed herself. She doesn't have a family. Feed herself and her husband. <clears throat> you dated a married woman? She wasn't married. No, no. she wasn't Sorry. married when we were dating. No. Sorry, I didn't no. mean that. She wasn't dating when we were married. Uh, Break up the seriousness of that. No, it was great. I was hoping one of us yeah. was. That's good. That's good. <laughs> you dated a married woman. Have you ever dated a married woman? Dated a yes. married woman? No. Have you ever dated a taken woman? No, I don't think so. Have you ever taken a woman from a man? There are some gray areas, but huh? I don't think I can answer it affirmatively based on what you're asking me. How would you answer it? Um, I never ever... date. No, 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 no. I've never dated a married woman. I don't think that I've slept with a woman who is with someone. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm clean. No. Right. Yeah, I got a clean slate in that department. How is your sex life? <laughs> Pretty poor. <laughs> no good. No, let's 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 talk about it. All right. Because I know Anthony. Do you? Yeah. 
No, 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 he does, he does. He knows all about your sex life. Yeah, yeah, he talks about it all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ricky just this week was talking about, like... Yeah. You're the one behind those cameras yeah, I found. Yeah, <laughs> All right. I got permission Yeah. from your mom. That's what she said. She outranks you. Yeah, she does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, as mothers do. Yes. <clears throat> it's like, can I put these cameras up, Mrs. Anthony's mom? She's like, oh, sure, <laughs> Anthony's friend. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I have another cookie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let me ask you guys this. this. This is a good quote from Mark Twain. Everything human is pathetic. Hmm. The secret source of humor itself is not joy, but sorrow. There's no humor in heaven. What does that mean to you? Sounds like a lyric. I like that quote. I like that line. Something funny about dying. Did you say there's something funny or nothing? There's nothing funny about dying. It depends on who it is. <laughs> no, I think there is, though. There is something funny in dying. Tell me about it. Well, I mean, we're all doomed to accept that same fate, right? We're all going to die. Yes. What, are, what the fuck are we doing now? What are we doing in your garage in the sweltering heat? We're trying to find... A podcast. Some humor. No, no, no. We're, I argue we're trying to find some humor in death. I'm doing a podcast. I would argue we're trying to find humor <laughs> in his gastrol. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's what it's about. Anthony, is there anything funny about dying? Uh, not about me dying. <laughs> There's not a goddamn thing funny about that. Uh, that's frightening. Uh, but as far as just death in general, yeah, I'm sure there's, I mean, I'm sure, I can't think of any examples, but I'm sure I've laughed at someone's depicted death in a movie or just like what? Where, like I said, I can't think of any examples. Uh, it I'm was sure. a depicted death in a movie. I don't know. How about in real life? What did you laugh at somebody's death? Seriously. I don't know. I'm sure, I'm sure I've seen a comedy where somebody died and it was in a comical way and I laughed. Hmm. I'm just saying that like, okay, it okay. depends on the situation. <clears throat> I like that answer. Do you Elvis guys uh, hold on, hold on. on the toilet. Hey, hey, hey. Do you guys fear death? Yes. <laughs> do you? I do. You're... I think we're all on board on this yes. project. Okay, yes, we fear death. How do you guys deal with your fear of death? Crying alone? No, seriously. Me too. No, you're not serious. <laughs> Okay, yeah. fine. Billy knows everything. He's so smart. I know things. Ricky doesn't cry alone at night because he's scared to die. I was just afraid to admit that Ricky cries alone at night. <laughs> it made me feel uncomfortable. He sits there and hugs his pillow, wiping his tears, hoping his girlfriend doesn't Yeah, because it sucks him. because I think that Ricky is the guy that has all the answers. Ricky feels 100% in control all the time. No. He always has a girlfriend to make him feel special. Do I? That's not. Seems that way. Yeah. yeah. Does that's, it? That's how it seems. Mister, I've been married since I've known you. Yeah, but. Uh, just Mister, because, I'm just in a perfect uh, relationship. Because I have, like, one long standing relationship. I'm just trying to get where Anthony's at. It, well, what I'm saying is, like, it just seems that, like, ever since I've met you, you've always had a girl. I've always had a girl. Yeah. Yeah, true. So, what are you trying to say? I'm a whore? No. No, I'm just saying that Billy's I need someone to make me feel better about myself? Yes. Dude, you are the one projecting all that shit onto yourself. I make myself feel better about myself all the time in the bathroom. That's fine. What does that mean? I what happens in the bathroom? <laughs> you never told me about what happens in the bathroom. Please. Anthony's applauding me. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but you gotta tell me what goes on in the bathroom. Uh, so, what? <laughs> I always need a girlfriend to make myself I didn't feel say better. Need. I didn't say need. Uh, all I said is he said that you always have a girlfriend. What about Billy it? never having a girlfriend? Sure. And that's another conversation. But right let's now, talk about that now. No, well, let's finish this and then maybe we can work on me. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say that I was not trying to attack you in any way. I feel attacked. I'm, I apologize. Billy, I just grabbed my shield when you came at me. Billy <laughs> said something to the effect of Mr. Always has a girlfriend. And I was like, yeah, you're right. He always has a girlfriend. <laughs> it was just an observation. And that's where it ended. So I apologize. It's all right. We're just trying to spice up the podcast, I guess. Billy. I'm not trying to spice up the con the podcast. I just want to have real real conversations. I agree. Okay, and I'm so excited that like we, you know seriously like yes, yeah, so I've known you a long time. 
Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, guys. I'm guys. talking now. Uh, uh, no, let me talk. Can I talk? Let me talk. Let me talk for a moment. Let me talk. I've known you for a long time. Ricky, I've known you since we were eight years old. Hmm? We've never just had a real conversation about these things. In 25 years, I've never had a conversation? No, we have. About what things? It's relationships. Oh, stuff. okay. Yes. What do you want to know? Exactly. What do you want to know? I'm asking you. Well, you can't ask me, what do I want to know? No, I'm not asking. I'm just saying, we never had those conversations. Didn't ask. I'm an open book. All right. Anthony. All right. You yes. go since Billy yes. Scratch we, we, can re, we can revisit the open book. Go, Anthony. I was going to say, this whole conversation started with you asking him about his low life. <laughs> so what is it you want to know about his low yeah, life? Yeah, what do you want to know? Go ahead and ask. Let's do it. We're on record. We're doing a podcast. We're on a whiskey break. We've taken a break. I don't know why. We haven't worked there very hard. <laughs> but we're, we're on a break. <laughs> what do you want to know? I don't know. <laughs> I guess. No, seriously. Ricky, come on. What do you want to know? Nothing. I'm What's just asking. What was you related? Uh, yes. What, what was the last time you felt a woman's caress against mm. your body? That wasn't... Paid. Isn't it paid? <laughs> <laughs> you say that like it's a bad thing. All right, fine. Last time you paid it's for... It's not a bad thing. It's a bad thing. Have you ever? No. No? No, not for money. You never... No, for no, humor? no, but... You ever <laughs> told a joke for sex? <laughs> I'll tell you a joke if you sleep with me. God, I would if there was such an opportunity. Try but for it. God's sake. Well, I mean, isn't that the whole idea of being a comedian? Is to impress people and get women to take their clothes off? Definitely. Absolutely. Has so, that ever worked for you? I'm sure it has. Yes. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. That's tell what it's about always it. about. I want to hear the story. You never tell me stories about these things. You always make up fucking shit. I want to hear a real no, no, Billy no, story. No, no, no. It's not about a specific story about me having sex with somebody, but that is the exact reason why. I want to hear the story. I want to do the joke. <laughs> of course <laughs> That's it is. That's why you want to tell is. jokes. It's yes, to get laid. Course. Yeah, well, of course. All of right. course. Yeah. Okay. That's what it's all about. Yes. Ask any comedian. I'm sure they'll... Say the same thing. A absolutely. Yes. Of course that's what it's about. And it's worked for you? No. Never? Uh, not never. Of course it's <clears throat> it's worked a time or two. I would say that... But what else do I do? I don't... I don't. You know, I'm not a big handsome hunky guy. I can't just get girls. But I don't manipulate girls either. I just... I'm myself. I don't think you know, what do I do? What do that. I do to survive? You've known me since I was eight years old. What do I do to survive? I make jokes. I try to win people over... By virtue of humor, mm -hmm. I, I I feel like I don't have anything else. And that's what I was going to say. I think that like it, <clears throat> if you've ever been laid, which I'm sure I know for a fact you have. You do know. You do know because you were there. You were there. You were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that time yeah, when you watched me? Go, I brokered yeah, it. That's an Anthony. Yeah. <laughs> look, look at this. You will look now. Oh, you will what? watch me oh, yes, I will. as I lay this woman, I and you said no, 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 no. <laughs> Your See, friend, and I don't want to be a part of this. And I said, You will be a part of this. Remember, you will watch this. I remember it slightly different. Okay. I remember going, Yes, I will. And then I unzip my pants. <laughs> I'll watch all you want. Yeah, that was. <laughs> okay, okay. Maybe, 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 maybe yes. Okay. Well, anyway, enough, what I would say is that. I like, want to hear more about this. That's what makes Billy attractive, is his sense of humor. <laughs> I'm just saying. But that's all I got, though. That's awesome. Yeah. I never you got thought a beard and a bald head, this. and you're masculine. Yeah. And what? Yeah. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got it. Tim Coffey. Like, yeah. Yeah. No, not Tim Coffey. <laughs> just Billy. <laughs> just a girly voice. Yeah. <clears throat> oh. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> this podcast took a different turn. <laughs> this is what I want. I want. An honest podcast. I want an honest interaction between us. Okay. Are you we've known uncomfortable each other with, I'm not at with all. this idea of I love finding it. Billy attractive? Never. Okay. I knew it. Thank God. Uh, all right. how, how often have you guys pretended to understand something that you didn't really understand? To get like late. a musical group. Yeah, uh, not just to get late, <laughs> but just to be popular. Even with a guy. Just, I just, just to be popular. I do it like, daily. Yeah. Well, give me the last example. I the got an time, example. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, last yeah. time I pretended to, to to really understand something like a, earlier a, 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 a band or a movie or 
I, I don't know. I guess I know, like, all the time, like, you'll start a conversation and you'll go, you know, so-and-so, and I'll go, yeah. And I have no fucking clue. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I do the, the same thing. I don't think that I knew when I asked you if you knew. I don't think I did. I don't think I did. Yes, that's the problem. What the fuck is wrong with us? That's what I'm asking. For God's sakes, it really bothers me. Uh, I do it all the time. Yes, I, yes, I, I think we all do. I have a hard time admitting I don't know something. I don't. So I have a hard time admitting I do know something. Do you? Yes, because then people expect me to have the answers. That's great. I think that's the way it should be. It should be the other way around. It should be like how you approach it. It should be, you should assume you know nothing. And I play the idiot very well. That's that's the way to, uh, I feel that's the way I should be approaching life. But Mariana wanted me to ask us how we could solve the, we can't, can't. we cannot <laughs> solve this problem. I think, that's, I think that is what Kill. we approve. Not through spiders, not through fucking Kevin uh, Costner, been th- not through no, Billy and his sex it. life. I've been thinking about it all week. Like, how can we make it funny? How can we make it cool? How do we make it cute? Can we solve this problem? And we cannot. And it, you know what? It really fucking hurts me. I wish we could. I want to help this. Country. Just like you want to help Yemen. Yes. Just like I want to help Yemen. Why do you want to help Yemen? What's going on in Yemen? Well, because we've been bombing Yemen. We've been supporting Saudi Arabia in their bombing campaign against Yemen. Nobody talks about it. It's not heavy in the news media. But we are murdering these people on a day-to-day basis supporting Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. We're talking about 9-11. Isn't who, who, who actually participated in 9-11? Who is to blame? The Saudis, yeah. The Saudis. But okay. isn't Yemen just one of many countries that that's happening where we're bombing and killing those people and we don't no, talk about it no no you're so absolutely why right. no it's one I, I don't know i don't know why billy read a news article right it's just the, no he saw pictures he showed us pictures yes there are but there are others as well you know so billy talk to us about what would you like to do with ukraine what should hollow points do should we start up a campaign mugga you want to mug of this shit on Facebook? Well, how do you guys feel? I mean, we got connections in different countries. No, we don't. <laughs> what we about don't Ukraine, Turkey? No, I do. Do you? I'm part of the uh, Hollow Points yes. media do you connections. Support, do, you, do you support I support it? our if podcast you do, every then, then maybe Friday we should, when then we, we come to my house and record here. I support it. Oh, I'm, no, no, no. I'm not. Please don't think and I'm despairing. I just Billy, why are you despairing me? I'm not despairing. Okay, fine. If you agree, I agree. We should. We should send. Should we start a? uh, Then we should do it. Should we campaign this? Should we get on? I think our own country is fucked. So why not say Ukrainian lives matter? You want to hashtag Ukrainian lives matter on Facebook? That's what. And Twitter. Yes. Anthony's Twitter boy here. I suck at it, man. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't too. think I keep getting stuff will, from the kids will. from Stranger Things. Yeah. That's all that happens. And Stephen King twittering about President Trump. Mm-hmm. What do you think, though, Anthony? About what? <clears throat> Ukrainian lives matter. Do they? Do they not? Yes. It'll make you all pain. human lives matter. I've explained this. Yes. But you were so against the Black Lives Matter movement. The movement. Because of all the fucking the hate that was coming out of it, just like all the fucking hate coming out of these fucking white supremacists. Yeah. That's what I'm against. I'm against the fucking the, the rhetoric and the hate. But yes, Charlotte's all lives, lives matter. Charlotte? Charlotteville? Charlotte? Charlotteville. Yes, all human lives matter. Except for Polish people, because you've always hated them. All human lives matter. No, you hated <laughs> Polish people. You've he always hated, hated them. He hated Polish sausage. Yeah. That's what he said once. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. They all matter. On that note, any other final thoughts? No, I don't have anything. Anthony? I'm good. Thank God no one asked me about my sex life. Good night. Good night. God bless you. Okay?